this chapter, I quickly want to recap what you should know already. And that's the first part in your notes. You know about central interest and you know about compound interest. When do you know how to work with simple interest? When you have to do a higher purchase, or you see the words straight line, linear, or straight line DK. Straight line BK means the value of your car or your machinery or your laptop, the value is decreasing. So then you use a minus in your simple interest formula. The same with compound, the value decreases. But compound interest you use when you work with inflation, growth, or the reducing balance method. When they don't state which type of interest that you, you should work with, you always choose compound interest. If they don't state in a question which type of interest that you should use, simple or compound, you always use compound. And these two types of interests has to do when you, when you deposit a big amount and you leave it for a time and then you subtract or you get the, the huge amount at a later stage. Today's work um, is when you deposit equal amounts monthly into a certain bank account. So the difference is, yeah, there's a once-off amount deposited and it lies there for an, a time period. And after the time has lapsed, then you get your money. Today's formula that I'm going to show you is every month you deposit the same amount. So it's monthly installments at regular intervals. Right, but I'm not going to get there now. Then you should also know how to convert between effective and nominal interest rates. Effective means what, what is the effect yearly? Nominal is parts of a year, monthly, weekly, daily, half semi-annually, semi whatever. And I can also ask you to convert between these parts. Then you also use this formula. Like for instance, convert quarterly to monthly. So they give you the nominal as quarterly. And they want you to convert the quarterly into a monthly interest rate. Then you also use this formula. Now the quarterly, you divide by 4 and you multiply by 4. The nominal, divide by 12, multiply by 12. Okay. Now for today's work. Now you have to focus. <coughs> We start with annuities. Who can tell me what an annuity is? <laughs> okay. It's a series, series of equal payments at regular intervals of a period. Like for instance, when you start working, you need to save for your old age. So you start depositing money into a certain account monthly and then when you reach retirement you can withdraw money from that 
account and that is your retirement fund. For this, we need the future value annuity. Future means in the future, I'll get my large amount. You get your large amount in the future. Okay, the reason why I tell you that is because we also have a present value formula. So you must read carefully in your question, when will I receive my money in the future or now? If you will receive your money in the future, you use this formula. If you receive your money now, you use another formula. But we'll get to that one on, a, on another day. The F stands for the future value. So after 20 years, what is the amount that I will get? The X in this formula is the equal payments, the monthly payments. I pay a thousand rand every month into this account. Then my X is a thousand. I will receive five million rand in 10 years time. Then my F is five million. The M is not <laughs> the N is not the number of years. <laughs> okay. The N in this formula is not the years. The N is the number of payments. So how many times am I going to deposit that thousand rand? So that is the number of payments. And remember, you can also multiply it um, when they give you the years. And I is the interest rate divided by 100. And I must be divided if they ask you parts of years. Just like this compound interest. Okay, let's do two examples. We don't have a starting value, so it's zero. And every month you deposit money that grows. Our first example. Now we read carefully. And by saying you read carefully, you make notes <coughs> while you read. Okay, let's start. Jennifer decides to invest 600 rand every month. That's your clue, the word, the clue word. What do you call that? Keywords. Keywords. X, therefore, equals 600. She decides to invest, invest 600 rand every month for two years. Okay, the two years will come into effect with N. So you associate the years with N, but N in the formula is the number of payments. So for two years, if she pays monthly, how many times will she pay? 24. Okay, so I have to multiply by 12. The interest rate is 12% compounded monthly. Therefore, 12 over 100 divided by 12 monthly. So that's my I. She makes each payment at the end of the month. This is also important to read. At the end of the month. What is the value of her investment after the two years? So now you have to decide. Is she going to get the huge amount now or in the future? In the future. Therefore, that will be my F. And now you draw your timeline. Now this timeline is not compulsory, but it is a huge help when you do your sum to look at how many payments, where is the huge amount, when did she pay, at the beginning of the month, or the end of the month, or whatever. So when you do a timeline, you also start, you always start at time zero. That is when you open the account. 
time zero. In this case, we have 2 times 12, so we have 24 time periods. Okay. At the top of the timeline, <clears throat> I write my interest rate. So it's 12% and it's monthly. At the bottom, you write your time period, two years. A lot of you are just staring at me. This is not on your notes. So you have to draw it in. And now you read 600 grand every month, therefore, and every month at the end of the month, you deposit 600 grand. And they ask, what is the value of the investment after two years? And we decided it's going to be F at the end. Now, when you do a um, um, financial sum, you always start with the correct formula. So it's very important to make sure, is it really the F formula? Or is it the A formula happen? Or is it the P formula coming later? So make sure before you start your sum, am I sure it is the F formula? Yes, because it adds the value after two years. So it's in the future that I will receive my huge amount. Therefore, I write my F formula. And then you make a short summary, either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of this formula before you start substituting. I need F. So it's F question mark. The next value in my formula is X. X, what is X value? 600 rand. The next variable is I. So what will I be? 12 divided by 100, that's my 12%, but it's compounded monthly, therefore I still need to divide it by 12 as well. So you can either write 0, 0,12 over 12, or 12 over 100 divided by 12. The next variable is N. N means how many payments will I make in the two years. It's two years, it's monthly, therefore 2 times 12 is 24. And now you substitute these values in your formula. You always write your formula clean, then you show your substitution, then you type it on your calculator and you get your final answer. So there must be at least three steps. Right, now I substitute all my values. And you type it in your calculator exactly as that is. So I'm going to use the block over the block to start off my formula. Then you get your answer. So after two years, by paying 600 rand every month, she will finally get 16,000 rand, more or less, as the huge amount. Everybody with me? Okay. Uh, so then, why does it matter if you put money in at the end of the month? Okay. We'll get to that in a later lesson. Sometimes you start your timeline and they say you immediately deposit 600 rand and then in e at every end of the month. So how many months are there in 12 months, uh, in two years? 24 months. But how many times did she deposit? 25 times. Therefore, the timeline is very important. And you should know where to put in your arrow, at the end of every month or at the beginning of every month. Okay, but I'll teach you that when we come to that. 
Let's look at example two. Mikkel has just started his first job after completing his studies. He decides that he will take his first big holiday in three years' time. By then, the holiday will cost him 20,000 rand. So now, at this moment, he doesn't have any money for that holiday. So he has to start saving money monthly in order to get 20,000 rand in three years' time. How much should he pay into a savings account every month? Okay, let's go a little bit back. The three years' time, that is my N, depending on how often I should pay it in an account. The will cost him 20,000 is in the future. So that is F. How much should he pay every month? That is my X. So they actually ask the X. The bank offers him an interest rate of 18% per annum, compounded monthly. Therefore, my I is 18%, but monthly means I have to divide the I with 12 and multiply the N with 12. And payments must be made at the end of every month. Okay. I forgot my timeline. I know it's a future value. Because I talk about 20,000 Rand in three years' time. Now you go through your um, formula and you write your summary. If I already know it's 20,000. X is what they ask. I is the percentage. So it's 18%, but I have to divide it by 12. And the N is 3 years. I have to multiply the N with 12. And then, after you've written your clean formula, you do your substitution. And now a tip. When you need to get X alone, because they ask you X, do the algebra part first before you start typing it in on your calculator. So, I need to get rid of this denominator. How do you get rid of a denominator? Multiply you multiply both sides. both sides. So, I multiplied this denominator with the 20,000. And now I have that on the right hand side. I want x alone. So I have to divide with a block bracket both sides. So now I divide with a block bracket both sides. And then you have x alone. And now you type it in on your calculator. Why? Why do you think should you do it like that? Hmm? For rounding off, another reason, it saves time. Okay, so instead of working out what that is, and then the bracket, and then minusing it, and then dividing it, and then take it over, and then dividing, and then multiplying, and show a hundred steps, you do the algebra first, type that in on your calculator, and then you get your answer once off. All right, it's just a tip. But if that confuses you, go the long way. Yep. When you see how n is the number of payments, so when you multiply n by 12, that's to say 12 months. Yes. So you don't take the compounded monthly and multiply it with the deficit. No. You, you take you, this, divide by 12 and multiply by 12. Only applies to i. And to n. Okay. I has a small circle key and divide looks like that. So the divide goes with I. 
And when you divide, you must always multiply to cancel it out somewhere. So you, you multiply the n with the, if it's monthly, it's 12. If it's quarterly, it's 4. If it's semi-annually, it's 2, etc. Does that answer your question? Okay. Right. Now I want to just summarize what is important so that you don't struggle with finances. Read your question in detail. If you need to read it three times, you do it three times. Rather spend more time on a question than just spot read and make mistakes. Right, so in finances, never spot read. Don't just look for the numbers. Oh, that is the years, that is the excess, that is A, that is F. Don't do that. Never spot read in finances. Draw your timeline. It's a huge help, even if it doesn't count any marks. Okay? Ask yourself, when will I get the money? For no long? Now or in future? Is it a once-off payment? If it's a once-off payment, you need you use Appen. If it's regular payments, the same amount, then you use F if you receive your money in the future. As soon as you've decided which formula you're going to use, write down the clean formula, then do the summary, then the substitution, and then use your calculator. Okay, are there any questions so far? Now I quickly want to just touch on the topic of sinking funds. This is not in your notes. Okay, but it's important that you know what it is. Because you will get questions in your homework about sinking funds. A sinking fund is an account that you open at the bank for replacing old machinery or old computers or an old car. You want to replace that by buying a new one. But I want to sell this old thing and use that money as a deposit for the new thing. So, you want to replace a computer in, let's say, two years' time. Then you work out what will the new one cost, and you use Appen for that. So let's say 